Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Hiking Away Rights. It's been a while. In fact, it's been exactly two months since that last video up on Glaramara. And if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know exactly why. Although, doing that, <laughs> if you're not a regular to the channel and see me do that, doesn't look good, does it? I'm talking about my toe, of course. The toenail saga that seems to be going on forever. So, I'm going to have to break with tradition uh, this time. As you know, I've been moving through the guidebooks, the Alfred Wainwright guidebooks from north to south. The next one in the list, the hit list, is Scarfell Pike, but it's a long one. It's a high walk and a very long walk. So, yeah, I think what I need to do is a couple of walks before that, just to test everything out, make sure everything's all right, and also get my fitness up a little bit, because like I said, it's been a, it's been a while. And I'm just gonna stop there, Look at this tree. Wow, I'm gonna have to walk right beneath it. Anyway, eek. <laughs> so I've decided to do a little bit of a circular route that's gonna take in a couple of the lowest Wainwrights. And yeah, it's gonna be, I think, a wonderful day. Let's go and have a look at the map and see exactly where we're going and exactly which Wainwrights we're hitting today. So from the car park at Glen Mary, we're gonna head up through the woods towards Tarn House. And I think we'll go around the eastern side of the tarn so we can enjoy those glorious views. We're then going to cut across to Iron Kailed Plantation, which will eventually lead us up to the first Wainwright of the day, Black Fell. After that, we'll drop down towards Low Ironside and make our way down to the A593. We'll cross that road and then we'll go past Low Oxenfell, High Oxenfell, and eventually get to Hodge Close and probably have a wander down there. After that, we're going to make our way up to the second and final way night of the day, Home Fell. What a beauty. Finally, we'll drop down past Utree Tarn and Utree Farm, back to the van. That's it. This is probably one of my favourite routes, actually. It's wonderful. And I think I've actually done a video here before. I think. I don't know. It's been a while. But a lot of interest on this route in terms of views up on Black Fell and also Home Fell. I love Home Fell. Uh, but also, you know, history and industry. There's a lot going on, a hell of a lot going on. And the first thing we're going to see is a really nice little waterfall. Let's go and have a look at that. Now, it is a really dark day today. That's why it looks really dark and gloomy on the camera. Because <laughs> uh, it's early and it's winter. And to be honest with you, this is not the best time to come and do this route. If I was to choose, if I had a choice, I'd come here either in late summer, well, mid to late summer, or autumn, or both. Because obviously in August, you get the heather up on Homefell, and I'll show you the heather later on. It's obviously all dead at the moment. And then in the summer, obviously you get the full trees. It's beautiful around here, honestly, absolutely stunning. But once again, in autumn, you also get the changing trees. So um, obviously the trees are changing around here but up on home fell you've got all the larch trees and yeah well I'll talk about that later on because it's quite breathtaking look at the waterfall here so we're going up there but let's just pop down here can you see it I don't even know if you can see it <laughs> it's so dark but yeah beautiful isn't it absolutely gorgeous uh, if you come in the summer, it probably will be like a little trickle. It won't be as good as this, so yeah, maybe come in the winter as well. <laughs> See it full. Nice. So let's get on. Slowly but surely making our way up to Tarn House. Yeah, this time of day, around about nine o'clock, it should be fairly quiet up there. So because it's the middle of winter and everything is dead, just not getting those smells of the vegetation, you know, all the moss and the, the leaves and the, that typical summer smell. Everything's growing. Uh, so you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit today around here, but also up on the fell as well. And just imagine what it looks like in those summer months and autumn and spring. Right, let's get through here. It's like a thin man gate. Go on, you go through. But it's got a fat man section at the back there, so we could 
should be good. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're good. Drama. Okay, we are at Tarn House. I've never seen it this quiet, look at it. I can't see a single person. That's never happened in my life. <laughs> it's quite nice, a tiny, tiny bit of ice on the water as well there. I think this is probably one of, if not the most accessible place in the Lake District. In terms of, you know, wheelchair access, pushchair access, Zimmer frame access because of these paths and people who are, you know, unable to walk along paths which have just been there, you know, up, up the river there, it's a little bit rocky, it's a bit tricky, there's a lot of places like that, um, or even on the fells, they can come here and get that feel. They can enjoy the Lake District with relative ease and uh, obviously on a normal clear day, get the views as well. I mean, it's still beautiful, isn't it? Even on a, a bit of a grey day. So in terms of forecast, it is actually meant to be like this, overcast in the morning. Yesterday was amazing. I should have come yesterday, but I couldn't. It, it, honestly, the light was incredible. But all this is actually supposed to break up a little bit later on, which could end up yielding the most perfect light. Maybe, we'll see. And I'm kind of hoping that that'll happen on home fell, uh, the last fell of the day before we drop back down to the van. There's no one here, look. <laughs> if you've been to Tarn House, tell me how many times you've walked around it and not seen a single person. I know I've only been here like two minutes, but still. Then you just chase the robin off. Okay, ordinarily, from here, you'd be able to see the Langdale Pikes right there. Just imagine it there. It's an outstanding view because you've got all these Scots pines on the little islands, you've got reflections, and you've got Langdale Pikes normally. <sighs> Not today. <laughs> yeah, it's nice if you come here in autumn because obviously you get the colours, all the brackens changing to a fiery red. You come at the right time of day, you get the low sun hitting the pikes and hitting here. So the path just kind of winds around and eventually gets to the highest point around the town and it's at that point that we're going to break off and head towards Blackfell. I think I've just seen my first person. Oh, that's a woodpecker out there. Okay, we're now at the exit point. It's gonna take us out of Tan House. Um, that's not so bad. It's not so bad. We've got rocks, logs, and we'll go around here. I'm sorry if it's a bit dark, by the way. It's, it's a real struggle today to try and get the settings right, so that, oh, she went the right way. No, she didn't. <laughs> so that you know you can see things properly not being too dark but then obviously not being too you know pixelated and noisy with the the high iso stick with me because <laughs> i think all this is going to break up i'm pretty confident of that so if you look on the map you can actually see that we walk around this this is torva intake and then we're going to be walking into iron killed plantation and then onto iron killed and round up onto the summit of Black Fell. And down. Now you can go that way, um, but we're not. We're going to go down the track here a little bit further and 
head up that way because it's I think it's slightly shorter ever so slightly shorter and <laughs> that thing that's been cut off at the top there in the distance that's home fell so all that needs to lift okay here we go leave the track we go through the fat boy gate of course as always <sighs> It's very dead around here, doesn't it? And that's the problem with winter in this country. You know, in spring, summer, autumn, it's obviously beautiful. England is a beautiful country in those seasons. But in winter, the only thing that makes winter nice is snow. If it, if it snow here now, it would be magical, but we just don't seem to get any because of the jet stream, you know. We're on the same latitude as Juneau in Alaska and they get a lot of snow in the winter, so flipping jet stream might come back and do like a mini video perhaps in future come back and do this same route in one of those seasons just so you can see it in contrast okay we've now reached our first obstacle of the day queues now these are the belted galloways they're normally quite placid but we just never know dear i don't know if there's a calf in there I think it's probably safe to say that I'm a bit of a wuss. <laughs> scared of cows, scared of horses, scared of spiders, scared of spider horses, scared of the dark, scared of my own shadow, sometimes scared of Finn. But cows are big, they're big and unpredictable. This is why I don't like horses, because they are, you know, they could do anything. They could just turn around, not even see you, and then just squish you against a barbed wire fence. As you get to this gate, you can see Piker Stickle, Loft Crag, right in front of you. I think it's Piker Stickle. Fat boy gate. What are you going through there for? Are you a fat girl? Nice jump. All right, here we are on the summit of Black Fell. This is Black Crag. <laughs> one of them, one of the many. There's about 25 Black Crags and two Black Crags plural great isn't it <laughs> so this is the true summit of Blackfell and if you look on the map Blackfell is actually quite a substantial lump it's quite a big hill it extends a long way to the north and um, what we'll do is I'll have a wander over there in a minute I'll go and see where I did a time lapse last time I was here it's lovely but first I have a wander down to the south cairn there south summit cairn south cairn something yeah, lovely. Esthet, Windermere, and you can see Latterborough quite clearly, I think. And, sorry, spinning around all the place. Connison Water, we can now see Tan House there where we walked around. So the car, the van, sorry, I always call it a car for some reason. The van is down that way somewhere. We got Home Fell. Oh, I think it's just out of the cloud now, actually. I think it's just lifted. And the summit is out the cloud. That boards very well. Because as you can see, all the fells have been sliced off at the top. Right, let's get down to that can, have a look. Without sliding. And then we'll get over the uh, this um, style here, which has obviously been changed since the last time I was here, because I'm pretty sure it was quite dilapidated. You wouldn't think she was 11, would you? Sometimes she's like a puppy. Look at her. She's such a poser. Aren't you? You're a poser. 
here we go. The South Cairn, so you can sit here, look, nice little seat. And enjoy, while you're having your butties, that view for not a lot of effort, really. And from here, you get to see, well, there's Luffrig, the south end of Luffrig, goes up to the summit there. You've got Ambleside. Ordinarily, you'd have Wandsfell here, <laughs> and then Waterhead, Windermere Lord Hotel there, all the way down to Windermere, the town, and way out, you can actually see way out towards Yorkshire Dales, and keep white dog is going to fall off. You having fun? You having fun? You love hiking the Wainwrights, don't you? You love the people that watch Hiking the Wainwrights. If you are regular and you fancy supporting what I'm doing here, supporting the channel, keeping me getting out here and doing these videos, please consider joining my Patreon clan. It's called the Black Clan. It is the best community on the internet ever because it's growing. It is really growing. Some fantastic, I've met some great people who I would actually call friends now over on the clan and they're all meeting each other as well and becoming friends, which they wouldn't have done had they not joined the clan. So for as little as two pounds a month, you know, you get all these perks that are on the screen now, plus there'll be other things coming in future and you get to support me and, you know, make these videos go on forever until the day I drop down dead, which will hopefully be on one of these videos. Finn, the destroyer of sticks. What's it taste of? Chocolate. Stick. All right, let's get back over to Black Crag, the summit. And then, like I said, we'll head over to the north end of the hill. Not right over to the north end of the hill, that's miles away. <laughs> but um, a little stroll across to the point where I set up a time lapse a couple of years ago and I did that dedicated Blackfell video. If you haven't seen that, go and check it out after this. It's not it's not great. <laughs> it's alright, I'm kidding. I think it's alright. Ooh, nice jump. Oh, another nice jump. I don't think I need to go back up there, do I? Black crag. Okay, over this style. <laughs> Here's the dog. There you go. You wait there for me. Right. Yeah, I think last time, I think the bottom two rungs were missing, I think. Now then, shall I leave you here? Bye bye, Finn. Come on, you. Ooh. Ooh, watch yourself. Ooh. <laughs> Made a friend. Is that your new friend, Finn? Come on, let's go. Good dog. It's quite nice when you get to this point here. Just look back. You've got the trig point. You've got Connison Water. You've got this lovely little style here and the wall. And obviously the latch trees. Yeah, quite a lot of bang for your buck. Some lovely photographs to be had around here. Really lovely. And ordinarily, I know I keep banging on about it, but that is an absolutely astounding view right there with Langdale Pikes and, well, everything else. Such a shame, everything just looks so flat. But if you do come to Blackfell, absolutely worthwhile coming over that style and, and getting yourself along to here. Definitely, it's lovely. So I think last time I was here, let's have a look. Yeah, I think I was perched just here, look, with Finn. <laughs> And I set the camera up and did a time lapse that way, somewhere, over in that direction. What a shame it's not the same today, but you know, you get the idea. You can imagine what it's like. <laughs> Ordinarily, it's lovely. So, like I said, all this is Black Fell. It goes right over there, look, and drops down to Skeleth Bridge. So, it is a big lump, low, a big low lump that, you know, kind of terminates up here on Black Crag. Right, I think I'm going to carry on with the walk now, and I'm going to make my way down towards Low Side, which is down there, that farm. Oh, you're a good dog. Oh, rubbish balance. Oh, we're down. There you go, good dog. Okay, back at Black Crag. 
Okay, if you look over towards Hornfell, it's about a centimetre of gap now between the top and the cloud base. So right in front of us, apart from that cute little white dog, is Silver Howe, again in the Clag, and to the right of that, further away, is Helm Crag. It's funny, I'm already looking forward to coming back and doing another walk here. I think this will be a really good walk to do on a black mass. What do you think? Ooh, that was seriously bogtastic. Okay, the bridle way is just up here now, it's not far. Okay, onto the bridle way. Pretty much plain sailing all the way down to the road now. But if you are gonna walk down here, remember it is a bridle way. And you do get mountain bikers flying down here. Uh, I almost got run over by some a few years ago. <laughs> In the dark, it was kind of scary. Okay, this is Low Arnside. And this was the home of the semi-famous smuggler, local smuggler here in the Lake District, called Lanty Slee. Now, I've been meaning for years to come and do a video about Lanty Slee and to kind of go to the places where he used to distill his moonshine and also follow in his footsteps out towards Ravenglass where he'd take his, his, uh, his wares, tobacco and alcohol and that kind of stuff. I'm just not sure if you guys will be all that interested in it, so that's why I've not done it. If you would be interested, let me know in the comments, because, yeah, it'd be a fun one to make. It might be a little bit at night time. I know you don't like the night hikes, but some of it will be at night time, maybe not all of it, but there's no point in making it if you're not that interested. The clouds are definitely lifting, because that there is great intake. And Lingmuir, look, has almost got its summit out, so getting excited. Wolfrig is clear now as well. Yeah, well then. So we actually lose quite a lot of height now as we head back down to the road. Um, um, obviously, <laughs> we're going to have to gain it all again. Go on, skid. Yeah, she skidded. <laughs> More non herdies What is going on? Finn's not impressed at all. Oh. <laughs> Go on, it gets moved. That's it. Okay, this is the A593 that runs between Ambleside and Coniston. And we're just literally crossing over here onto the smaller lanes, but I'm just gonna stick her on the lead because it's quite a busy road. Come on, let's come for your lead. So straight across here, Finn. Nothing coming. Yeah, we're going straight over here. Look at that, <laughs> for a quintessential Lakeland cottage. Oh wow, my nostrils are filled with the smell of wood smoke. <laughs> and once upon a time, that to me symbolized the Lake District in winter and summer. But now when I smell it, I'm transported thousands of miles away to Nepal. One foot is in Nepal and one foot is in the Lake District. It's weird. The smell of it reminds me of both places. I have to admit, it is one of the greatest smells known to man. I guess that maybe because it's something, you know, personal to me, but also maybe it has something a little bit more primal to it, you know, because we've been making fires for a long, long time and perhaps it's kind of written into our genetic code now. I don't know. But I think a lot of people like the smell of wood smoke. Okay, heading up onto the main track that's going to take us past um, High Oxen. 
fell. Look at this here. <laughs> the amount of cars that have got snagged on here, completely stuck, and just, you know, scraped the whole side of the car is incredible. I've actually been here and witnessed a car trying to do this turn. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> what were you doing then? Oh, it's a shame we can't see and oh we can. Let's have a look. That would make a really nice little cottage with that view. Sit out there and have your beer or your coffee. So I've just heard an RAF plane go through the valley there. That's another good sign that the weather is going to change. It's definitely lifting, definitely lifting. It's get, definitely getting lighter. Okay, here we are at High Oxenfell. Look at this cottage. So we're now around about five minutes away from Hodge Close. And I think what I'll do is I will drop down into the, the quarry itself, into that northern end. Uh, I have done several videos there anyway. So if you're a regular to the channel, you know and you've seen it already. But I can't walk past Hodge Close and not go down there. It's, it's beautiful. So I'll have a look at it. It'll be very different to those previous videos because I think it'll be mostly dead like it is here. All the trees are, are bare. So it might look a bit different. It might also be a bit dark down there because it's a dark day. So I'll try my best to film it, but hopefully you can get the idea and see the cavern at the bottom there. So if you wanted to, you could actually just, you know, if you wanted to cut out Hodge Close and just make your way up to Home Fell straight away, you can take this path here that runs across the top of um, Hodge Close and you can actually look down into it a little bit. But we don't want that. We want to go and have a look. <laughs> All right. Let's head into the pit. Still nobody around. <laughs> Something going on. It's weird. If you are coming here, by the way, just be careful of these little things sticking out the ground. It's been a few times where I've almost tripped on that one and almost impaled myself on that one. <laughs> so yeah, be careful. Nice though, we've got a silver birch down here, we've got larch. These are all larch. This is obviously silver birch. Okay, I'm now approaching my favourite part of this cavern. At the bottom here, as it levels off, it just feels very much like, I don't know, Jurassic Park, Hawaii, Madeira, Madeira. You know, like the uh, Levadas or just the very, very steep-sided valleys they have there. Beautiful. All right, she's going on the scrounge now because this is where people come and have the butties. So she'll be looking for those butty crumbs. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it. I can hardly see it with my eyes, they're that bad. So the place you go, if you want to go and see the skull, is on the other side there. And you have to drop down from that end. So just walking on the remnants of a crane. Very, very cool place. And you know, you get divers coming here I think it's like 100 foot deep or something. It's crazy, or 150 foot deep. 
And there's all kinds of little tunnels going off where the divers can swim. This bit here, this huge hole, is actually the eye. One of the, well, it is the eye. And this gets reflected in the water. And then that's when you, you see the skull. Enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good place to come. Every time I come to this area, this part of the lake's always come to Hodge Close and have a wander down here because it never gets boring, ever. It's a fascinating place. And am I right in thinking that The Witcher was filmed here? I don't know if they had a scene here. They might have done, I don't know, I've not watched it. They might have had one here, and I think they were out there where the skull was in the background as well. So they would have climbed down that bit. Interestingly enough, when they were filming, Josh and I were up on um, Pike Stickle, doing a video up there. No, we weren't doing a video, I think we were just walking. And we looked down towards Bleetan, and there was a guy on a horse and loads of other people, like cameramen and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I thought, that's gotta be Henry Cavill, gotta be. Anyway, let's get back up. Just a very quick visit. And um, we'll see what the chances are of getting down on that north side. Sometimes it's a bit icy and it's a bit, it's a bit dodgy, but we'll give it a go. Um, we'll have a look. And if it's not a go, then we'll just sit down and have a marsh bar. A few minutes of sweat later, we're back at the top. This is honestly nothing of a thing for her. <laughs> She just flies around everywhere. And here's me shielding you from these big walks. Maybe she's been blagging it the whole time. Maybe she's just a malingerer. Okay, let's move on to the North Pot. I think it's North. North. You might, no, it's not North. It's West, that's East. I think, I'm just trying to get the map in my head. Yes, we're heading to the Western Pot. Honestly, my head goes on these these videos I have all these ideas to talk about things, all this knowledge to share, and it all just goes poof, straight out. So if you continue down here, you end up at um, Cathedral Cavern. Well worth going to as well. I've done a video on that previously. Okay, here we are at the Hodge Close car park. Now there are a few places you could park along this route. Obviously the place where I parked, but you could park at um, Tan House or here, or, or even on the A593. What's going on here? Wow. Now this used to be just like flat, you know, you could walk out there. There's a classic shot right behind that digger. There's a silver birch, can you see it? That is a very popular shot with photographers. Okay, let's go to the top end of the hole and then uh, see if we can drop down. Uh, excuse me, you stay on this side of the fence, cheeky. <laughs> right, here it is. And the route up to Holmfell will be going that way in a minute. But let's go and have a look. It's sometimes running with water. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's looking a bit slippy down here, let me show you. Yeah, it's looking a bit polished. And you be careful, Finn. I don't want you dropping down there. I mean, it is a pretty straightforward scoot down, but I don't think my foot is quite up to that yet. I forgot just how big the drops were down there. They're not big drops, but you've kind of got to wedge your feet into places and I ain't wedging this anywhere. So if you want to see what it looks like, um, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit on the screen, if I can find that video, I don't even know if I can find that. It was such an old one, but then you can see what it's like down there. And if you want to have a look at the full video, it's on the channel. I think what I'm going to do is perch around here somewhere and have a marsh bar, because. I'm flagging a bit, I've not eaten today, so I'm gonna have a Morris bar for breakfast, and yes, it's a duo. <laughs> I'm trying out the duos, see how we get on. This looks like a good place to stop, look. This block 
get her some food as well. And then we'll both be energized for our last scamper up onto uh, home fell. Wow, look at this. There you go. Big drop. <laughs> Ooh, what we got here? Right, both of us are satiated. That's a duo downrange and a whole lot of kibble for her and some biscuits. So we are gonna be like a couple of giddy kippers from now on. God have mercy on your soul. That should power us up um, home fell now. Can I get through this side? Yes. Because yeah, like I was saying, I was flagging a bit. I think she was flagging a bit as well. Just means we can enjoy it and I'll try not to talk too much. <laughs> oh dear. But this path I'm joining now is the one that you would have come along, or we would have come along, had we not dropped down to the bottom of Hodge Close. It's here, and then you wander up this way. More people. So as I've mentioned before, I think on a previous video, the word home means land that's surrounded by wet ground and you'll see in a minute <laughs> why this hill is so aptly named because it is a bit of a squelch fest we will get wet feet well she always gets wet feet but we as in you and i will get wet feet going up here <laughs> finny we on the gate can't own the gate I'm a little bit concerned about all this carnage here. All this. These are larch trees that have probably fallen and fallen in the winds, the storms we've had. Ordinarily, I carry on down this track and then hook up to the left. But I think today I'm gonna to go this way and get to the little townlet up here. It's quite nice. Wow, there's, there's so many trees down, look. Look at that in there. Just everywhere. Just dead trees everywhere, look. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> There's a belted Galloway coo over there. On the other side of the town. What does this sign say here? No overnight stay, no camping, no fires, no litter. Fair enough. That is fair enough. Too, too low here. Shouldn't be camping here. Look at that. That's a great shot actually with the cow. Hello again. <laughs> oh. You're not very friendly, Finn. Okay, so last time I was here with my camera. I did just come with my camera, I didn't, um, didn't do a video. And I must admit, I do like those days. I love filming, don't get me wrong, I love making these videos for you. But it is nice to get out with my camera from time to time. And I've got a few shots here. See, I think there's some trees missing already. But I love the reflections here. And I got some, you know, reflected shots. And I like to turn them the other way around. So then you think, is that, is that the right way around? Or is that a reflection? What's going on? And I kind of like that, just messing around a bit, really. It's nice to get out and be creative. But uh, yeah, lovely, lovely, quiet spot. Again, be nice for picnic. Oh, that was really bad. <laughs> okay, let's get past these belted galloways. I think there's a couple of them, maybe more. And, um, ah, oh, yeah, see, the tree that it's munching on, that was stood the last time I was here. That was an actual living tree. And it was quite good, it was a, a good, photo opportunity but gone when you see trees you've got to get the shots because they might not always be there Moo. they're very cute oh there's loads of them look. they're all in the woods here look all just dotted around the little stripy bodies <laughs> they're all the way over there look i think if i remember rightly the squelchiest bit of this walk We've actually kind of got round it a little bit. It's, it's this bit here. 
and coming in from the other side it's a bit wet but actually this route I've taken today is all right it's not bad at all oh. Fanny. She just kind of pushes you out of the way. <laughs> as long as she gets up all right, that's all that matters. So the views are all opening up now in all directions. Giggling. Good. Okay, here we are on the summit of Home Fell. Boy, I was feeling those last few steps then. <laughs> Here we go, highest point. And we get a cracking view out towards Coniston now. In fact, I'll tell you what, <laughs> she is. Let's head out to this outcrop of rock here and have a look down. This way, Finn, let's climb up here. You are so impatient, Finn. <laughs> it just rams me out of the way. There we go. That's better. Now we get a completely unhindered view of Coniston. I think it's defi definitely worth hanging around. Maybe half an hour, maybe a bit more. I mean, it's only like one o'clock, so I've got a good three hours before sunset. So, yeah, I think what I'll, what I'll do is I'll head over to the other side, the other end of the fell, because, well, you'll see why. It's gorgeous. It's nice here, but that's the better end. I often sit there and uh, wait for stuff. This way, Finn. This is where I always come. It's a really good little spot. Because you get this lovely grassy area here that you can sit on. Nice and dry, and you get that view. That's not bad, is it? Let's get your jumper on. Give me. Oh, there you go. Head in. Let's get that pouring. <laughs> yeah, lovely little dog, aren't you? Spin you around, Let's get that back leg in. There you go. Good dog. Whoa. Nice and warm. <laughs> You're a good dog. There you go, good girl. We've got a happy dog. <laughs> happy ish. Honestly, it's amazing how warm that keeps her. When I when I take that off later, because she hates walking in it, when I take it off later, the amount of heat that comes out is amazing. So, yeah, very good buy. I don't have any links to this, Amazon links or anything like that, affiliate links. The company's called Equifleece. Go and check them out. Really good. They're waterproof, they're windproof, and, well, you know, just keep your dog warm. They come in all kinds of different sizes and colours and what have you. <laughs> very good. Yeah, I, you know what, I think, I mean, I don't know if it's coming up to camera again. <laughs> it's looking very light there, so looking up towards grit intake, the clouds are looking very light, like the sun trying to burn through, so it could be good. I'm definitely going to hang around. There's no, there's no reason to go yet. It's not like it's windy or it's rainy. I might have a bit of a kip, like she is. <laughs> And uh, just wait, because, yeah, anything could happen. But it's worth pointing out that the last time I was here, stood right here, I took a photograph of some larch trees down there. The sun, it was one of those magical moments. God light, it was, it was incredible. And it's of the larch trees down there. And it's actually on my website if you're interested in buying that 
for your home. It's there. Obviously, you're supporting the channel as well. And yeah, it's a little bit of a favourite of mine as well. Loved it. And I called it the um, the Council of Larch Men because it just looks like a whole bunch of larch trees just having a little bit of a meeting, you know, chatting about all these flipping photographers wandering around the hill. How can we drown them <laughs> in the tarn? To stick with tradition, I'm going to have a little spin around. I'm going to show you what you can see from here. Yeah, again, you have to use your imagination a little bit because obviously things are shrouded. So I'll just point to where things are and uh, you'll get, your, get the idea. Let's have a look. I don't think it's going to happen, you know. There's been several times while I've been here, been about half an hour now, where the Langdale Pikes out that way have started to glow. There's obviously the light coming through the clouds a little bit, but you can see the cloud base is still not moving. It's not shifting at all. It looks like it's getting lighter here. It's been several times it's, it's been glowing, but I can see it dropping down. Actually, the, the the cloud base is dropping down onto great intake. It should be doing the opposite. It should be going up. I mean, I could just sit here for another hour and nothing happen. <sighs> That's just a bit desperate, isn't it? A bit boring. <laughs> and it's a, it is a wee bit cold, has to be said. I think what I'm going to do is take my coat off because it's, it's going to be quite warm going back down there, I think. Once we get moving again, we'll generate lots of heat, get her little jumper off and then make my way down. So the way you go down, I think I'm going to go down the way I came up and you kind of go betwixt the summit and the next kind of lesser summit down in that direction there. And it's a fairly quick descent down to U Tree Farm, near U Tree Town. So yeah, let's, let's do it. Come on, let's go to the pub. Right, all packed up. Quick check, nothing left. <laughs> you just know what's going to happen, you know it. As soon as I get down to the valley, back down to the van, it's all going to clear out and it's going to be epic conditions. What it'll do is it'll, it won't clear. The blanket of cloud will stay where it is and we'll get this god light coming underneath it and illuminating crags and amazing looking herdies and stuff. <laughs> Just a bit irritated by it all because yesterday was unbelievable. As I said, the light was... I was kind of crying a little bit, but I just couldn't come out. I had, had a, a foot appointment yesterday. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm still here. You get the idea of what it looks like. And hopefully, um, if you've not been here before, it's going to give you some ideas for a walk and get yourself out and do this route. Have a drink. Good girl. <laughs> I'm going to put my foot right there, Finn. So you need to move. <laughs> He is so cheeky. It's barging me out of the way all the time. Um, I think, let's go this way. So, I actually forgot to mention at the top there, this is another one of our heather hills. Probably one of the best ones, actually. As you can see, all this brown stuff here that's dead, that's all heather. So come August, it'll all be pink. Oh, 
Okay, I've gone completely wrong. <laughs> so if you are gonna follow this route on the map, follow the route that's in the description, not the way I've come today. Um, I kind of went wrong and then thought, I'm just gonna keep on going. And I'm still doing that. I could just double back and go back the way I should be going, but this looks really interesting. Never been to this bit before. I can see down to Yew Tree Farm down there. And through the trees I can see um, kind of some water. And there's this very, very faint path coming down here. I, I can't help but want to keep going and see where it ends up. I need to be much further over that way. If it's just going to turn into this nightmare crag, then I will uh, I will turn back. But I just want to see what's around this corner. Ooh, just be careful around here, Finn. So that's Yew Tree Tan down there. Okay. I think this is Ivy Crag. It's pretty loose around here, actually. Do not come this way, please. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for anybody falling off this, off this hill. I don't think this is a goy, you know. I think that is just... <laughs> I think that is the end of the line. So, yes, I'm going to double back. That's a nice view, though, isn't it? And um, try and find the, the correct path this time. I think what I'll do is head up here. Go across the top of Ivy Crag instead, instead of the front of it. Oh, you know, <laughs> when you go off piste, you can end up finding some little treasures. I think it's a rowan tree. I'm only guessing because of the shape of it. This way, Finn. <laughs> you crazy. Here's another nice looking tree. Don't know what it is. I'm gonna guess it's an oak. This <laughs> is the path we're supposed to be on. There's the tarn again. There's the east summit. Past the pile of stones. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's going dark already. So it's been a pretty gloomy day. Kind of glad that I didn't stay up there um, hoping for sun because I think there's very little chance of that. Oh yes, I forgot about the boulders around here. There are some absolutely gigantic boulders. A baby one, a mummy one, and a Really great daddy one, look. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing that fall down from there? Imagine being here while it's happening. So that crag I was on before, when I was coming down, where the path stopped, it's right up there. So there was, was absolutely no way I could get down here. Directly below it now. Okay, you go first. Ladies first. Go on, you go. Come on. Go on. She like doesn't trust me. Take your time there, Finn. <laughs> so that's the whole descent done now. Literally just around the corner from Yew Tree Farm here. And this is why I chose this particular place to park, because I knew, you know, that I'd be pretty tired after coming down off um, Home Fell. I didn't want to have to then walk back up towards Tarn House. But the important thing now is the pub. Now I drove through Coniston. I'd like to go to why do I always forget the flipping name? Is it the bull or is it the black bull? I'm sure it's a black bull. I drove past there this morning and it looked like there's a lot of work being done. The car park seemed to be full of, you know, kind of tradesmen vans. So I wonder if they're getting a bit of work done and it's shut. So that's a shame if it is, because I like it there. It's ye olde style. But first, we've got to get back to the van. Not far, two minutes. Okay, I spoke too soon. We've got horses. Oh heck, let's hope they're friendly. You know what, I saw one herdy behind a fence over on Tarn House and I thought, should I say herdy herdy? I'm like, nah, there'll be loads of herdies on here. That's rubbish, it's behind a fence. I'll see loads, I haven't seen a single one until now. Okay, I mean, they're probably very nice. I don't know if they've noticed me yet. I don't know if they're pretending to not notice and then discharge. I mean, it's a nice looking horse, that, that white one. Like silver. 
I think we're all right, you know. <laughs> Actually quite cute. I love all animals. I know quite a few of you, particularly you guys in America, have said, what the hell are you scared of horses for, you know? Horses are great. They're just big, they're just big animals. And I know that horses can be, they can be assholes, they can. They've got personalities and they can just wind you up and do stuff to you, nip you and all sorts, so. Loads of room in this one, look at that. Come on, Finn. Oh, Finn, you're gonna get... <laughs> Honestly, how did that happen? Come on. Had a girl. Okay, here it is, U Tree Farm. It's a classic photo spot. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you where you can get a safe photograph from it, uh, of it from. Lovely. Human. Yeah, they're good dog. Come on in. God, there's dogs everywhere. <laughs> All chasing us off. Wow, that one really is. So, you can technically just walk along the road, but I wouldn't. I'd go onto this path here. There you go, Finny, good girl. Come. Okay, so the place you want to be for that shot is there. You're nice and safe, you're away from the road, and you get that. Zoom in a little bit, obviously I can't on this because it's an action cam, and you get a cracking shot. What the hell are you doing? You found treasure? All right, literally 30 seconds and we're back at the van. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate all your support. I really appreciate you spending your time watching these videos and I hope you get to do this walk. It's fantastic. As always, the route is in the description, but for the time being, I'm gonna go and have a pint somewhere. I don't know where. I hope you guys can come and join me. I'll see you back out on the next walk, wherever that is. Lingmu, I think. Let's go.